Well, our scripture today comes from the book of Exodus, Exodus 32, verses 1 through 14. And I'm sure this is a uh, passage you're, you're somewhat familiar with. And um, as, we, as we talk about today, maintaining our relationship with God. So let's hear the word of God now from Exodus be- chapter 32, beginning at verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. As you know, Moses was off meeting up on the mountain with God at this time. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him, an idol cast in the shaft, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because who you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They've been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Jesus, out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said. And they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and that I may destroy them. And then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Relationships. Relationships are probably one of the most important things we have in our lives. Without relationships, we would be very lonely. Without relationships, we would really be unable to function in a lot of ways, probably wouldn't even survive. Relationships with other people, they're wonderful and they're difficult. They're rewarding and they're frustrating. But no matter how good or how difficult our relationships are at various times, they're all extremely important to us and for our emotional and our psychological well-being. Now, we are all involved in relationships with many people, and we're involved in a relationship with God. But I think it's unfortunate that many people today take relationships for granted. I have done that in the past as well. We don't spend much time good or strong a relationship is with our spouse or with our friends, we don't really think about if the relationship is getting weaker or stronger because for many of us, we've been in the relationship for so long. We don't take the time to think about where it's heading, going to do, take to maintain it. Though we don't think about this, sociologists and psychologists will tell us that our relationships are always in motion. They're always either growing or declining. They're never the same. So to keep our relationships vibrant and alive and happy and rewarding, 
every day we do things that many times we don't even realize we're doing them. We negotiate with each other. We make adjustments to what we're doing. We, we change our way of thinking and we do whatever to keep the relationships alive and happy. And we find ourselves especially consciously doing this when the relationship seems to be not going very well. And a good example of that is when my wife and I were dating. I'll tell you a story about that, okay? What are you all smiling about? Now, because of my job with the Navy, I was the inspector general for the Navy. And so because of that, I could go to any naval base anytime I wanted to. I would show them who I was. I could get on any ship I wanted to. I would go in and meet with the commander and meet with the crew. I could go to naval air stations and get, you know, get right up face to face with fighter jets and, and fighter pilots and all that kind of thing. And I just had to do that. And I was also invited to participate in many functions like the christening of ships and stuff like that. I mean, that was the way it was. Well, while we were dating, many weekends, not every weekend, in my defense, it wasn't every weekend, but for many weekends, we could be found at the Norfolk Naval Base or at the Naval Air Station at Patuxent River, you know, getting up, having, having the greatest time in the world, getting up close with these big ships and with fighter planes and, and, and Navy men and Navy women and, oh, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. It was wonderful. We did this many weekends because that's what I thoroughly enjoyed doing. It was a lot of fun. And Barbara did it too for a while. Yeah, but before long, I, I, I still can't believe this, before long, Barbara actually started to lose interest and started to get bored. Well, who would get bored with doing this? I mean, this was so exciting. But she, I'm making a joke, of course. But she did. She got kind of tired of doing it. And what did that And that for our relationship and, and is what we were doing was no longer working for her. And before long, if we kept doing this, it certainly would have had an impact on our relationship because she really got tired of doing this, okay? Now, I, I have to admit, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box and, and, and not the most sensitive person in the world, but I am smart enough to realize that if I wanted the relationship to continue, I had to make some changes in expectations. I had to renegotiate this relationship area and how we actually spent weekends. And I realized, you see, it be done if I was going to keep this relationship growing. You know, whether or not we realize it, all our relationships are like this. Yeah, no matter how we begin, a somewhere along the way they change. And when they change, and they will, they do constantly, we have a choice. We can either ignore it and hope for the best, or we can renegotiate and work through whatever stumbling blocks have come to the relationship, which will result in the relationship that continues and ultimately grows stronger. This is what we're seeing, this kind of relationship being played out in our between Moses and God. You know, God called Moses to lead the Israelite people out of Egypt. Moses was scared to death to do it. He wasn't sure what to do or if he could even do it. Yet even though he was afraid and he wasn't sure, Moses, Moses trusted God and he went to Egypt and he faced Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world. And through his faith and trust in God, God used Moses mightily to bring God's people out of captivity. And after all this is done that we're talking about, you know, we've come to our text today. And right now in our text, we're probably 10 to 15 years after God at the burning bush. Remember that burning bush incident <laughs> when all this began, you know? And in our text today, we read an account of a conversation between Moses and God. God is angry at the Israelites, and God had every reason to be angry at them because once again, the Israelites have turned away from God. Once again, they've built an idol, a hard God, who they were now going to worship. And because of this, 
frankly, God had had it with them. He was over the top with them, okay? He was fed up with their sinfulness and their disobedience, and he was ready to be done with them once and for all, all of their sin. So God just talked about it. And as we look at this conversation between Moses, what I would like you to focus on, think about, is the tone of the conversation more so than the specific words. Because when we look at the depth of this conversation between God and Moses, we can see clearly that the relationship between God and Moses has come a long way. That relationship has grown and has been strengthened through love and through the trust that God and Moses have for each other. I mean, look at what God says to Moses. God says, well, Moses, they're your people now. I'm with them. Your people whom you brought out of Egypt, your people, Moses, they're yours. Your people have become corrupt. So go back to them. Leave me alone so I can stew in my anger before I destroy them. And what happens? How does Moses respond? Moses then disagrees with God's decision. He disagrees with God? Can you imagine? No, you know, Moses says, just, just wait a minute, Lord. Just, just wait a minute. They're still your people. Don't lay this on me. You know, they're still your people. You're the one brought them out of Egypt. You just used me to do it. You're the one whose power defeated Pharaoh. Destroy them now. And all you're going to do is prove the Egyptians were right. When they said you were going to lead them out, lead the Israelites out so that you could destroy them in the world. Beside now, beside, remember this. Remember the promises you made through Abraham and Isaac? Hmm. Let me ask you this morning. You ever talk to God like that? Have you ever, you know, it's kind of scary when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. However, let's look a little deeper. Moses talks and reasons with God because of the loving, trusting relationship that Moses and God have. And as a result of the conversation, what did God do? How did God handle this? Did he strike Moses down right there for disagreeing with God Almighty? Did he say, how dare you talk to the Lord your God this way? Did Moses just kind of zap, I mean, did God just kind of zap Moses right there on the spot? And take him out? No. God listened to Moses. That's what relationships are all about. Listening and loving and respecting one another. As a result, what we have read here this morning is, I believe, the most powerful prayer of intercession in the entire Bible. Because one man, Moses, interceded for the entire nation of Israel, asking God to spare them, and God listened. And through his love and trust of God, Moses communicated with God. And God only list, not only listened, but God changed his mind. And through all of this, the relationship grew even stronger. You know, I meet so many people to uh, each week who believe that becoming a Christian, accepting Christ into their lives requires really little or nothing else. You know, you make a decision, you walk down the aisle on a Sunday morning, you stand up in front of a congregation, and you answer a bunch of questions, and you're done. You've joined the holy club, and that's all that's really needed. That's all you have to do. And what these folks don't realize, except accepting Christ is not joining some holy club. Make a decision to accept Christ and dedicating our lives to him and to his service. That's just the first step. That's the first step in beginning to build a long-term relationship with God. A relationship that every day either gets stronger or weaker. You see, being in relationship with God, honest with God, it means openly sharing with God what's working in the relationship and what's not working. It means honestly trusting God and being open to God's calling on our lives. So, having said all of that, let me ask you this thing. Is that the kind of relationship you have 
with God? Is that the kind of relationship you have with him? Have you evaluated your relationship with God lately? And if so, is it stronger or is it weaker than it was at some point in the past? Are there parts of the relationship that are no longer working for you? For instance, you having difficulty finding time to pray? Are you having difficulty understanding the Bible? Do, do you feel kind of distant from God or maybe not as close to God as you might? at one other time is something missing from your faith and you just can't quite put your finger on it well friends whatever is not working today is a golden opportunity to take it to the lord and to renegotiate that relationship to go to god in prayer to ask god what the problem is to ask god to show you what's gotten in the way to ask god to reveal to you what needs to fix the relationship. And then we need to be willing to do whatever's necessary to grow the relationship with God and to get it back on track. Or maybe you think everything's okay. Maybe you think that the relationship is fine and everything seems to be working, but it seems like lately God is, uh, you know, maybe God's saying, uh, you know, he wants to renegotiate with you. Maybe he's even saying that to you right here this morning. God wants to renegotiate because the relationship is not where God wants it to be. Are you willing to listen to God and to get back on track with, with what God wants for you and for your life? You see, Moses was able to openly talk and share with God because he and God had developed a and actually had renegotiated it necessary god was able to talk and share with moses because moses listened to god moses was obedient because moses was god called him to do what about us what about us? we all want a relationship with god we all want to walk closely with him every day and to be able to experience god in our lives and to experience the joy of our salvation but is our relationship with God strong enough and open enough to be able to do that? Have you actually renegotiated your relationship with God lately? You know, I'm going to ask you to take a few moments in prayer, in just a moment, and to admit to God maybe your relationship is not where you want it to be. Maybe it's not where you know it should be, that you're not really doing what God wants you to be doing and that you're not really what God wants you to be tell him this morning tell him this morning that you're sorry for your sin that you're sorry for building the idols and for worshiping them instead of him confess your sins this morning and get back into that relationship that god wants with you that god is seeking with you and to know and to know it's the one that you want with god as well and then ask the holy spirit to lead you and to strengthen you as your relationship with God grows and prospers. And as you draw closer to your God. Let's spend a few moments now quietly in prayer. Let's see what God has to say to each one of us. Lord, we talk about being in relationship with you. Wow, we talk about that all the time. But many times we don't think about what does that relationship really mean? Father, for some of us here this morning, it seems like you're kind of distant, like it's hard to make a connection with you. 
Or maybe we are having trouble finding the time to pray or maybe read the Bible or understand it. Show us what needs to be done, Lord. Show us what we need to do to get back on track with you. Oh, it's so easy to fall away, Lord. It's so easy to pull back and, and, and to, to let things slide and just hope for the best. But Lord, we thank you this morning that you're not satisfied with that. You're not satisfied with us not being close to you because you love us so much. You want to be close with us every day. So help us, Lord, to renegotiate this, to tell you how we're feeling, and to ask you what do we need to do, and then to rely on your Holy Spirit to give us the courage and the strength to do what you call us to do. We all want to be in relationship. We want to walk closely with you, Lord. We see other people who seem close to you, and we find ourselves saying, oh, I wish I had a faith. Well, Lord, you'll give it to us if we let you. We know that you'll, let, that you'll give us all that we need. So as we pray this morning, and as we continue each day this week to pray a prayer, a prayer of renegotiation, help us, Lord, to be open to you so that we, like Moses, can talk with you can share with you, can tell you how we feel and to hear you speak to us. Maybe not if with words, but with feelings and through other people, but to know that you're communicating with us to let us know how much you love us. Father, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for being our God and for calling us and giving us the ability to be your people that we take for granted so much. We do love you, Lord, and we want to draw closer to you as you speak out, to, as you reach out to us now, and as you speak to us through your word and through your love. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for being here. I hope that God has been able to reach you and to touch you during this service. We've got a lot to think about this week. Where is my relationship with God? Where is it? Is it growing? Is it declining? Where is it? And the best way to answer that is simply to ask God. He'll answer it. He'll tell you. And then ask him what needs to be done. Ask him to show you his blessing, to show you his love and his grace every day anew, to let you know what you need to do. But then the hard part is we got to be willing to do it. And that's not always so easy. But God will give you the strength. You know, God called Moses to go meet Pharaoh. Can you imagine what Moses must have thought? There is no way I can do this. Well, you know, that's not, that's what God's calling us to do is nothing compared to that. He calls us to make some changes in our lives, maybe to change the way we're thinking, to change the way we see things. That's not so hard if we allow him to do it and we allow him to continue to grow us in our faith. So think about that this week. And as you go from here now, go in his love, go in his strength, walk with him this week, talk with him this week, tell God jokes. He loves jokes. Yeah, but in all you do, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go today and every day walking in his peace. Amen. We'll see you next week.